Namaste. Welcome to another episode of Logistically Speaking. We have a very special guest joining us today. And he is very well known in the shipping industry. And let me introduce and welcome Mr. Pradhan for this episode of Logistically Speaking. Mr. Pradhan is the president of iCargo and also the group chairman of CP1. And he is also the president of Consolidators Association of India. So thank you Mr. Pradhan. Thank you for uh, joining Logistically Speaking series. And we are very glad to have you on board for this particular series. And I'm sure the audience will be eager to hear from you on your valuable insights about the industry and also about your organization. Thanks a lot, Jess. It's been a great pleasure here being with you. I hope the audience like this interview and is of help to them. I wish you all the best for your new series and I hope it continues for years together. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Pradhan. So, let's get into the show. So, Mr. Pradhan, given the current situation of the pandemic, how important is collaboration between organization, especially in shipping? I don't know why we are talking about pandemic as such. But I am a firm believer that nobody is perfect to do everything correct or right on his own. You know, we need help of others. And it is very important that the organizations collaborate to add value to their products or services. And if you talk about shipping in particular, the feeder operations that these uh, shipping lines do, the agreements on consortium what these shipping lines have, or if we get on to the co-loaders uh, consolidators, the co-loads that we do is nothing but collaboration. It may be a loose term, but it really makes sense. So I would say whether pandemic or no pandemic, collaboration adds value to your services and products and we must do it. You can take simple examples outside the industry, like Ola, Uber, Airbnb. They are working so fine with collaboration, and I don't see any reason why collaborations should not be done. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You give a real valuable insight to that particular question. Thank you. Have you had to make any difficult decisions during this time? Good question. Uh, in this pandemic, Every business owner, be it in shipping or any other industry, he would have had to take some decisions which are against his wish, which are bitter. But yes, that's the way to survive. If I go back, you know, we were a bit lucky. Because of our tie-ups with China, you know, we have been in constant touch with uh, our Chinese partners. And we have been talking of how we should deal with it because we were told that this is going to be a global phenomenon and everybody will have to go through it. We never knew that this is going to hit us so hard, so fast and for such, such a long time. However, when we actually went into a lockdown, we realized that the preparations that we had done were not good enough. You know, We realized that we have to do something different if we have to survive. To be honest, for a couple of days I was in an absolute shock. I did not know how to respond, what to do, and what is it that can bring us out of this uh, difficult situation. However, you know, I have been meditating for a long time. And when I gathered composure after a couple of days, I sat calmly, meditated, and then I thought, what can bring us out of this uh, uh, situation? That was the time uh, two things came into my mind. One was, how do I get my debts? You know, my data is how are they going to pay me? Two is, if I have to go through this time successfully, then I have to cut my cost. So the first thing what I did was, we immediately stopped clean credits. That means, if there's nothing in pipeline, we stop the shipments of those customers and recovered our money. It was a very unpleasant decision 
which was not liked by RCA staff, but we still executed it and we had some unsatisfied customers. But as I see back, I mean that was a good decision and most of the people followed it. Two was how do we cut down the cost? That was also very important. One, we gave up our office in Fort, which was used for releasing bills of ladings and delivery orders. We gave up one of our back office and made people work from home. Two is, though we did not cut down on our staff, because realizing the situation, we did not want to be harsh to the staff. We proposed a temporary reduction in the salaries. And fortunately, our team, you know, supported us wholeheartedly and we could manage it. Luckily today, as I see, we are back to our pre-COVID uh, salaries and everything is on the oh, That's great. And I would say like uh, your personal discipline also helped in bringing a discipline to the organization yes. and started as it uh, probably. Okay, great. When it comes to government intervention and support, what was expected? And what according to you is missing? Uh, a very good question. Uh, you know, this in fact was asked by many of our partners abroad, and uh, my answer was very simple. You know, uh, in many countries, the government supported the businesses by being substantial part of the salaries to the employees, or coming up with interest waivers on the loans that they had, uh, the businesses had taken. Some of the ports agreed to give waivers on the ground rents and detentions and whatever the lines agreed. And many other things uh, when it comes to our government. You know, as I see the situation of our country, the financial situation in particular, our country has so many poor people. And the government's first aim has to be take care of the poor people who are below the party line and that's a huge number so that is what our government did and that I think is the right thing which the government should have done if I was in a decision making situation I would have done the same and lastly I do not expect the government to support my business why should they I mean they have given us enough they have to do something for the downtrodden people to bring their lives to a better position and that is what our government should do. So basically the support from the government is at as per yourself. I so How has your organization recalibrated? Are there any fundamental changes being made with right to your business and how it will be conducted in the future? Honestly we haven't done too many changes. The only change that uh, we did and which not only today but which was planned for a very long time that we wanted to be capable that all our staff except for sales and operations you know they should be able to work from wherever they are and with this pandemic this was more so and that is what we encourage our staff to work from home that saves a lot of time and money for them. At the same time, when we look back at the last six months, the way these teams have performed, the way these teams, you know, have used their time, I'm very, very happy about it. I really thank my team from all locations, from the bottom of my heart, that they have done a wonderful job and I would love to continue with it till the time my people, my team members are comfortable with it. So it's like uh, you are well prepared and this is actually the continuation of your preparation which is good. Yes. Okay. Has the customer expectation changed? And if so, how are you managing them? You know, just talking about the expectations of the customer in any industry. They want and expect more than what we give. And it is the same for our business too. However, during this pandemic, if you are talking about what we had to do was to go an extra mile. Some of the customers had problems sending their staff for releasing PLs or issuing delivery orders. Some of the people asked for extra free days. 
and yes, we oblige them wherever we could. Uh, for some of the customers, we delivered the bills of trading to their offices or even couriered it directly to their customers or whatever we could do. We also made arrangements to issue the bills of trading or delivery orders at the CFS, which was very, very convenient for them. So this is what we tried to do. Of course, if you talk about the expectations of credits, we were not able to fulfill. But that was totally beyond our control. You know, we had no way to extend credits because all of a sudden the shipping lines they came up with reducing our credits. So we had to in turn, you know, act accordingly. So wherever possible, we did it. The other thing was, you know, there are so many problems in the CFS, like for shortage of labor, shortage of forklift. We had prepared ourselves with our own labor own forklift at our cost and that was what the customers highly appreciated and that is where we got some additional support from them and after all what do you want you need more business and that's it that's what we got so i'm very happy about it and you expect also this kind of new new normal which is going to continue also i think so I and mean, should be what does the future look like and what technologies do you see being adopted? I think uh, the future is bright. And let me tell you, I'm a very, very optimistic person. I don't give up till the last moment. So for me, I always believe that there's a lot more better in store for all of us. And I work towards it. And I encourage every business owner to have the same feeling and work hard towards it. So that is what, unless we have a positive mindset, we can never progress. Of course, I'm not saying that, you know, people should only think positive, but your every action has to be positive in that direction. And I'm 100% sure the success will be yours. If you talk about the new technologies, you know, first is I would talk about this digital, transformation that people are talking of, you know. People think going on social media, having a fantastic website, or doing social media marketing are is digital transformation. I beg to differ on it. I mean, I'm not saying that this is not uh, digital transformation. Yes, these are parts of digital transformation. But unless and until you have clear understanding of what is digital transformation like unless you are adding value to your customers unless you are working on certain things which brings down your cost of operation drastically cost of you know back office or services drastically unless you are in a position to increase your productivity and the last but not the least unless you are able to increase the profitability by doing all these things. I don't think that we are actually digitally transforming. We are just getting into parts, bits and pieces of the digital transformation process. And every business owner should look at this and ensure that these four criteria are looked upon when we talk of the digital transformation. The other thing is, you asked about the technologies being used. I am not an expert, so I would not like to go into too much of detail about it. But as I see the blockchain technology, as I see the chat box, the API integrations, the artificial intelligence, these have already been started to be used in some of the industries. And I think in the coming two to three years, these will be the new normals in our industry. And all of us will be probably using these technologies to do our business and grow. And uh, these days you also hear about a lot of online portals coming up for booking, freight forwarding, something like the Amazon in the, that particular segment. Do you really see this kind of things will come up in future for freight forwarding, consolidation or uh, shipping? Yes, I think. See, everything has to change. We have been doing this business in the same manner for years. There is definitely going to be some change. Like today, Merchline, they announced a LCL service. 
I do not know what they are doing today, but they have offered a service. So if they have offered and with the technology that they have, I'm hundred percent sure they will make use of these technologies to grow in this, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that will also result in the many other consolidators adopting to this new kind of uh, ways exactly. of doing this. If we really want to progress, if we really want to be in line with the competition, we will have to use it. Yeah. Have you enjoyed working from home? Do you think work from home is the future or this is just a transitional trend? To answer your first question, I really enjoyed working from home. I love it. I have never got so much time with my family members. I stay with my father, mother, my wife. My son is uh, not with us, he is in the world. But this seven months, I would say, have been the best months of my life. Uh, I have been more productive and more busy during this. I get lots of time to plan about the strategies, to plan about the processes, and to plan about the business development. And that is what I think as a business owner, all of us should be doing. You know? But we get engrossed into small little things in the office, day-to-day -day work. I wouldn't say small little, but day-to-day -day work in the office. That takes a lot of our time. But working from home, you are working without being disturbed by any of your staff members. So that's a very good thing. In my personal opinion, I would encourage my staff to work from home as much as possible. They have really done their best in terms of service levels, in terms of their responses and everything. So it is all the more good that they should be working from home wherever possible. If you talk about others, I really do not know what their thinking is. But having tested the benefits of working from home in the last six to seven months, I think many business owners would love to have this kind of thing that helps them to reduce their cost of having a big office, maintenance, and all those things, travel time, and things like that. And if you see our connection, our interaction with the staff, with our network partners, and with our customers, has been much more better during these times. You know, when we are at home and on Zoom, this is much more better these days than we had it earlier. So I would definitely propagate working from home as a new norm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Like I always hear like uh, the small little things, those are the major hindrance for many other business owners to really progress. Yes. So in a way, like uh, you can avoid this kind of small disturbances, yes. which can which can help you to do some bigger things. Yes, of course. What are the personal lessons you have learned during this time? Jaan hai to jaan. That means if you have, if you have life, if you have life, you have the world. You know, it is very, very important. You know, I have been uh, reading about spiritual development for quite some time. However, I got the opportunity to read more during this period. You know, I got a lot of time for myself. And one thing uh, came out is, you have to care for your life and you have to care for others' life too. I was never selfish, but this learnings, this readings during this period taught me one thing. You know, and that is, I started be more bothered or more caring about others, you know. That was a very big learning for me during this time. And to be honest, the more you care for others, the more you stand giving, you know, the more happy you feel. And that is what I have felt myself. So I'm very, very happy about this uh, period that I have been working over and I have been able to give time for myself. This has been very, very enlightening for me. So in a way, you have grown more spiritually also during this period, in a way. I really do not know whether I have grown, but I am definitely trying, trying to grow. So, so Mr. Pradhan, can you please share a few of your favorite things? Sure. First, maybe a favorite quote. Favorite quote? Well, there are many, but uh, 
the most apt for today's situation I would say. That's by uh, Charles Darwin. You know, he goes to say, it is not the strongest of the people or the species that would survive. It is not the most intelligent ones that would survive. The species who would survive are the most adaptable to the changing situation. Yeah, absolutely. That's so this, this is like much more apt to today's situation. You know? so, so we have to be adaptable. And that is what I really like. Yeah, that's great. And uh, your favorite book? Uh, my favorite book. To be honest, uh, you know, I love to read about biographies. And I have read many. But overall, if you see, you know, all our learning from childhood till now, if you take any book, most of the things are what you know, already know of. You know a lot of things. You are learning over the years. But I'm definite that every book has some content, maybe five, six, ten pages, that really change your life. So it is important for everyone to keep reading on the matters or the subjects that they find it interesting. So they can be good at that. However, having read so many biographies, I myself would like to tell certain things about it. You know, I have made five heroes of my life. No, that's not. And why? I will explain to you later. My heroes are Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj, Karna from Mahabharata, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, and Lokman Nepla. Why I have made this heroes is to take care of my stress, to take care of my problems. When I have read their autobiographies or anything related to their uh, characters, Whenever I have a problem, I throw my problem to my heroes. If I have this problem, if I am being betrayed, I throw a problem to Sambhaji Maharaj. How he will react to it? And then I come to know that my betrayal is a very small little thing. My problem, you know, instead of getting magnified, it becomes so small. And then I am able to think logically and then I find the solution very easy because the moment you start thinking logically, you find a solution to your problem because every answer is in understanding your problem better. And once your problem is small, then you understand it much better. And that's the reason I do it like that. I haven't been able to practice it in a in a way that I would love to. I have to still read a lot about my heroes and when I read about them more, I will be able to own up my skills to that extent. And I think that would definitely help me out. So basically you adopted a lot of the learnings and implemented it in your life also. I, to be honest, I did not adapt the learning. I am too small to adapt the learnings of these great people. Or I am too small to imitate also. What I have done is that I have tried to see how, what would be the effect of those things on my heroes. Are these problems which I go through day in and day out, are they so big that we can't find a solution? So if they can find or have tackled such issues in the past, you know, it is very, very easy the way they have done it. Why can't I tackle a small problem? So I'm trying to see, trying to seek a solution from the readings I have, the way they have strategized, the way they have gone ahead, the way they have countered their problems. So even a percentage of it, you know, can definitely help me to take care of my problems. So that's great.
and i know you are a person who travels around the world maybe like uh, so many days in a year you are traveling maybe you can mention one of your favorite destination which you travel i have traveled a lot but my favorite destination is in india you know the most i love and which i have been going to the last 5 years i go to uttaranchal every year and i love going to badrinath temple and kedarnath temple these are my most uh, loved places you know from the whole of the world i have traveled and i really get serene pleasure serene happiness from these uh, places and i love it it recharges me energizes yes. yes and so i make it a point that at least once in a year i go there this year i could not make it because of this pandemic let's see how uh, i can do it next year or later part of this year but it would be definitely to do this in my bucket so that's great and i hope you'll get a chance to yes, do that i so. would and what's your uh, favorite food i love food i am a food and i love and try each and every local food at that local place you know i love it but one thing uncomparable is the cook which is my mother you know she cooks so delicious food that i find that the best food. and that's always a superior one for me yeah that's good good i don't know whether you are much into movies but what's your favorite movie i i am definitely not a movie buff i don't spend time on movies i it's not that i don't like but i prefer to do something else but i would definitely talk about two movies uh, one was jab bhi main and the other one was free idiot basically you know <coughs> they are talking about doing things what comes to their mind or heart you know just do it and have a ball and that is what i love that attitude of the characters if you ask me who are the characters i am not the right one to answer because i take movies as you know entertainment not putting too much of brains into it but i love such type of things and even in those movies if you see they have shown mountains and things like that which are of interest to me that's great anyway thank you very much thank you mr pradhan it was uh, really wonderful to have a good conversation with you i can find like uh, you are a man full of energy and of course a uh, lot of ideas strategies everyone everything and i'm sure our audience will be glad to hear i mean they are uh, over this life experience uh, coming out of one of the veterans of the shipping industry thank you very much thank you for joining us in this episode of logistically speaking thanks yes and and i must say to all the audience okay. thank you very much